and friends, that was Keith. Thank you for that wonderful introduction to the introduction of which uh, I'm only here really to uh, introduce uh, our guest of honor, a remote guest of honor, but a very special one. But it's great to be with you in this uh, wonderful Center for Jewish Life to pay tribute to the incredible work of Rabbis Yosef and Mendy Vogel, to pay tribute to the spiritual energies that are have been driving this place and transforming people's lives. And it's great to have a Jewish center in the middle of London, isn't it? You know, I always say... I always refer to that famous uh, advertising uh, campaign of the Chase Manhattan Bank in New York in the 90s, which said you have a friend in the Chase Manhattan Bank and underneath an Israeli written, but in Bank Laumi you have Mishpal. <laughs> So, I'm sure we have many friends in the center of London, but here we have Mishpacha, an extended family that is absolutely great, and I pay tribute, not only to the Center for Jewish Life, but really to um, the person who inspired me, Elena, myself, who inspired Yosef and Mendy, actually responsible for their being here at all, and indeed inspired our guest of honor, Conrad Morris, and that is Rabbi Feivish and Robertson. Just here for a Friends, my role here is simply to introduce our guest of honor this evening, and of course, uh, for health reasons, he's not physically joining us, but is he joining us? Yeah, he's live, he's watching. He's going to be live, live. Yeah. Yes. He's watching? He's watching. Yes. Oh, Conrad, am I, I better not embarrass you, okay, <laughs> just forgive me, okay? Uh, friends, to pay tribute to a really great man, a really, really great figure of Anglo jury, to Conrad Morris, and to a great woman, his wife, Ruth and to pay tribute to the huge part they played in Anglo Jewry and in support of Am Yisrael in Medinat Yisrael. I, uh, you know, um, Conrad and Ruth were more involved in the work of my late and beloved predecessor, Lord Jacobovitz, of blessed memory. But Elena and I were able to see their work at first hand. And let me just tell it to you the way it was. If anything needed doing in Anglo Jury, Conrad was the first to see it, the first to say it, the first to do it, and the first to enlist others to do it as well. It was an astonishing thing, and it was a service to the community over decades that was as wondrous as it was modest, because he never sought the limelight, he never sought honors. There is a famous, there was a famous novelist called Joseph. Conrad. So I always associated the words Conrad and Joseph for some reason. And so I always thought of Conrad the way the Bible describes the biblical Yosef. You know, whether it's Potiphar's house or the Egyptian prison, or he's running the Egyptian economy, which he did, I think, a lot better than some of his successes in Europe today. One way or another, it says that whatever was being done, Joseph was. And that was what Anglo jury was like in the great Conrad and Ruth years. Whatever was being done, somewhere Conrad was making sure it happened. And like Joseph, he had a combination of the dreamer and the doer, the visionary and uh, the activist. And that was an astonishing achievement. i just give you one little insight. You know, Anglo jury was not always as laid back as it is now. It's pretty laid back. My fellow co-conspirator Rabbi Rosenfeld here, and we we've tried over the years to deconstruct Anglo jury a little. In fact, in my lodge, I said to Lionel way back, uh, "Let's try and create the world's first cathedral, Stiebel." <laughs> but actually, one of the wonderful works of deconstruction was done by Conrad decades ago. Conrad and Ruth used to live in Hamilton Terrace. And from their house to St. John's Wachul, they arranged the first ever Hachnosah Sefer Torah through the streets of London. Nobody had ever done it before. It's hard to believe now. In fact, it was so newsworthy that there were at least two, maybe three, film crews actually filming the event. And it was a joyous procession from Hamilton Terrace to uh, St. John's Wachul. And all the non-Jews said, 
Wonderful! And all the Jews said, too Jewish. <laughs> they couldn't bear the thought of being so publicly <coughs> affirming of your Judaism. But Conrad was the person who organized it. Conrad was that kind of person who never let convention stand in the way of doing what had to be done. And just simply seeing all that Conrad did for Jewish education in this country and for the state of Israel. It was wonderful, it was inspiring, and it was worthy of our highest respect. I have to say that, uh, of course, Anglo Jewry could not hold Conrad and Ruth because, rightly, they have made their way to the place that they were, always were, in heart, all along. A, in Yemin Moshe, in Yerushalayim Ira Kodesh. Yemin Moshe, named incidentally, as I'm sure you know, after another great Anglo Jew. You know, Yemin Moshe is named after Sir Moses Montefiore. And there, in Yemin Moshe, Conrad sits on his balcony, overlooking the old city, looking at Migdal David, where his heart always was, and he and Ruth are there as proud achievers of so much that lives on beyond them in Anglo Jewry. We are about to read Parshat Vayikra in the coming week. And that word Vayikra, says Rashi, means that when God spoke to Moses, he did so Belashon Chiba. God loved Moses. Why? Because Moses never sought any honors, he was just Moshe Ishkailohim, a, a man of God, that's all he was. And God loved him for it. But when Moshe came to write that word down in the Torah, he was so modest that he wrote it with a little love, as his way of saying, there's nothing special about me. And I know Conrad, who will be very irritated by me right now, because he's saying there was nothing special about me either. But there really was. Conrad, you were and are an Ish Halokim, a man of God, a hero of our community, a man we salute. My dear wife, my beloved children, my cherished friend, Rabbi Favish Vogel, Chief Rabbi. Lord Jonathan Sachs, Honorable Rabbonim, my dear friend Ambassador Abner, fellow trustees and advisors.